this isn't a one-time story. This is a reoccurring story. When I was younger, my mother and I were looking through her old high school yearbooks. Well, as I'm looking through them, this one girl stood out to me. And every page I looked at, she was the first thing I was drawn to. I asked my mother who she is, and why I keep seeing her. And she said, oh, she committed suicide in her parents' basement. I used to live in an older house. It was a little over a hundred years old, and we recently moved into a ten-year-old ranch. In my old house, my bedroom faced the hallway, so I could always see if anyone was coming towards my room. Every night, I saw a shadow dart past my door to the bathroom. I began having trouble sleeping, as I still do to this day. My parents would say it was just my imagination. So, I had a few friends sleep over, and they noticed it too. They actually made me shut my door. I started feeling tickles and laughs, and things would fall off my shelf. I told my aunt, and she said she was talking to a medium, and she was told that my grandpa was going to see one of the girls this weekend, being me or my sister. So, I was thankful to hear it was my grandfather. Only it wasn't. We had one day left in our old house before we were moving into a new. So, a friend of the family got a medium from Ohio to check out our house. This woman obviously knows nothing about us. She's telling all these stories about what she's seeing, but I was barely paying attention, because I wanted to hear her say my grandpa was upstairs. And as we were walking up towards my room, I remember her saying, I don't sense anyone here. Oh, wait. There's a woman hiding behind your door. There's only one spirit up here. Her name's Linda. I asked what Linda looked like, and she said she had long black hair, and that she was pretty. She also said Linda didn't let any other spirit up here, because she was very protective over me. Apparently, Linda has dealt with experiences that I have, namely depression and mental illness and was very protective over me, and she said it was sad to see me leave. So a month later, me and my mum were driving round a town called Ruthven, and we were dropping my sister off at a friend's, and the haunted house of Ruthven was brought up. I'd always heard this tale, having many friends living in Ruthven, and my mum said to me, Oh, yeah, I know the girl who used to live there. And a friend in the car says, Didn't she kill herself? My mum said yes, in her parents' basement. Her name was Linda. My heart dropped. The description the medium gave me of the Linda in my room looks exactly like the Linda in the yearbook. I've got a few paranormal experiences to tell, but this one is probably the biggest event that's happened to me in recent years. Everything that I say in this story, whether you believe me or not, is 100% true and happened to me about five months ago, up until now. Before we get into it, I thought I'd let you know that I'm sensitive, meaning I'm not quite psychic, but I see, sense, hear, and feel things that most people wouldn't. I've had this my whole life, but I'm only just starting to understand it, and that is one of the reasons why this story happened. Me, my little brother, my mum and stepfather, moved into a new house about five years ago because we needed an extra bedroom. This house was previously owned by quite a few people, including two men who died of natural causes in the house itself. At one point, the wife of one of the men who died decided to have lodgers because she needed money and was pretty lonely. Of course, my room would be the room that the stereotypical crazy person would have stayed in. No one is completely sure what he did in my room when he owned it, but he would always have weird people coming in and out at weird times. He never came out of his room, except to get food, and never spoke to anyone. It got so bad that the landlady actually kicked him out of the house and refused to let him back in, as well as brought a load of religious icons to try and purify the house, including a small crucifix, which I still have to this day. About 30 years had passed by the time my family moved in, and right away, I could sense a lot of different energies around the house. None of them were evil, however, and only seemed to either be curious about us, or not really care. 
Once we'd settled in, I noticed there was always a baseline of energy and spiritual activity that never left, but it made sure not to interfere with us if we didn't bother them. The worst thing to deal with at that point was a set of footsteps down the stairs, or a disembodied voice every once in a while, so my family were pretty content. All the activity really kicked off about five months ago, however, when I discovered that there was an iPhone app that was a lot like a spirit box that's used in shows like Ghost Adventures and such. It's like a radio that scans through frequencies quickly so that it's a constant static that spirits can supposedly speak through. I really wanted to find out who the people I was seeing were, and potentially make a connection with them to try and develop and understand my ability. So I downloaded it and started using it, but only got a few incoherent words back. This all changed when I asked about the person who previously stayed in my room. I immediately got a clear response of the name Robin when I asked who stayed here before. I then got the words evil and tunnel through, and I got scared. I deleted the app straight away, but the damage had already been done. From that night on, I was played by spirits in my room non-stop. There was a little girl with blonde hair and pigtails that would always tickle my feet and climb on me when I was trying to sleep. A man with half a face that would hide behind my wardrobe and moan constantly. My guardian spirit, who is actually the spirit of my great uncle Francis, started showing up regularly and stood by my window watching over me. That's when I knew something was wrong. The main part of this story happened one night in August. It was about 3am and I couldn't sleep. I just lay in my bed wide awake, as if I had felt an overwhelming negativity in my room for a while now, but couldn't explain it. I decided to turn over onto my back and turn my iPad on to try and get rid of the darkness in my room with the screen's light. That's when I saw them. Three huge figures stood over me menacingly. They had no discernible features, other than that they were huge. I'm not talking slender man tall big, I'm talking their heads were the size of my entire torso big. I was terrified, and frantically searched the room for Francis, but found him nowhere near me. I tried to rationalise as best as I could. My first thought was that I was going through sleep paralysis. This was quickly thrown out of the window, as I could still move without a problem. I then thought maybe I was still asleep, and this was a dream, but I pinched and kicked myself a lot, and I could still see them. I tried to think of anything that could explain it away, but couldn't find anything. In the end, after about five minutes of complete and utter terror, I plucked up the courage to stand up and run to the other end of my room to turn on the light. I had to run through one of the figures to get there as they surrounded me, and I was not looking forward to that but the feeling I got when I passed through that being was so strange. It was just so cold and lonely that it seemed really out of place for a spirit like that. I just sat on the floor in the corner for the rest of that night, staring at the place where those beings had been and racking my brain for an answer. I told my paranormal obsessed aunt about this experience the very next day, and she suggested that we go to a spiritual church that she knew of on the next Saturday to look for answers. We did so, and after the reading, I went up to some of the psychics there and asked if they knew what was going on. They all told me that the guy who had owned my room before me had been really into spirits like I am, but that he had taken it a lot further than me, inviting spirits to stay in the house and opening spiritual tunnels from our world to theirs so that the spirits could wander freely. When I told them of the three large spirits, They told me that those spirits were not the beings that had given off the feeling of pure terror like I had first thought. They said, the spirits I had seen were three ancient druidic spirits sent to protect me by my family, and that they had stood around me to protect me from a very nasty demonic being that had come through a tunnel that had been accidentally reopened by using the spirit box. I fell to the floor and cried. How could I have been so stupid? I released a demonic being into my house that could seriously hurt my family. Luckily, the psychic said that they could close the portal for good and send the demonic spirit away for me, which they did so immediately once I agreed. It really freaked me out when I looked back on it, as the spirit box had said the words evil and tunnel, which explained perfectly the spiritual tunnel being reopened and the evil presence being let back into the room. Now, I just had the name Robin to explain, 
and yep, you guessed it. Once I did some reading up on the house, I discovered that the crazy guy who stayed in my room before me's name was Robin. Suffice to say, I will never touch a spirit box again. When I was 18, I inherited my grandparents' house. Being 18 and still in high school, nothing much interested me about the house as far as living there. I wanted to get the hell away from the small town that I grew up in, and to be honest, without my grandparents living there, the house scared the holy hell out of me. So, my mum agreed to keep the house up until I decided what I wanted to do with it. At 23, I moved closer to my hometown and was married. The man I married owned a house of his own, but that had caught fire so the house had to be rebuilt. Just a town over was the one that I had, so agreeing that we didn't want to move his three children too far away, we would live in my house. So it was me, my husband, his two daughters and son, living in this house. Everything started out normal, but then again, all horror stories start out normal, don't they? To be honest, writing this down right now seems like a movie. Anyway... We had lived there for about two months, before things started to go south. One night I woke up at around 3am, and could hear talking and laughing in the living room. Thinking the kids are still awake, and they have school, I got up and went in to tell them to please go to bed. I walked out my bedroom and down the hallway, and noticed on the way that both bedroom doors were closed, and the soft sounds of music and TV were on in each of them. So I continued walking, when I heard this weird voice say stop. It wasn't loud, but at that moment, all the talking and laughing stopped. I was still in the hallway looking at the living room. It was totally black. Nothing was on. No kids were up, and nothing at all could explain what had just happened. I peeked in on the kids, and they were all sleeping in their beds. This went on for a few weeks, and I refused to come out of my room at night when everyone else was asleep. Now, a little backstory. Things in this house were never normal. My grandmother was a very religious person, and many times had the place blessed. However, as a small child, all I can really remember was that I refused to sleep by myself, and would get panic attacks if I was told I had to be alone in the house. Weird accidents would happen all the time that no one could explain, such as light bulbs exploding, appliances shocking people, or sometimes fires would start that even the electricians couldn't explain, and they would go out as suddenly as they had started. Gas wasn't used in the house, it was all electrical. So the next thing that started was a smell. Not all the time, but every once in a while, I would be in a room in the house and smell this awful odour, but couldn't ever find anything. Thinking it may have been something to do with the pipes, I called a plumber, who couldn't find anything himself. One night... My husband woke me up out of what I thought was a dead sleep, and I was standing next to his side of the bed. He kept telling me that he was saying, Stop! Stop! Wake up! And I replied, What the hell are you talking about? He said, You were standing over me, just swaying back and forth, and your eyes were not normal. They were black. We both just said I was probably sleepwalking and it was nothing, right? My sleepwalking got worse, I'd find myself in parts of the house and not know how I got there or what I was doing. One afternoon, we were home and I started crying in pain. My husband rushed over and asked what was wrong. I said my back felt like it was on fire. It was just burning as if someone had just slapped me with a hot pan. He lifted my shirt and on my back was a scarlet coloured circle with scratches in the middle. This is where the story only gets worse. Our children would start to complain about burning sensations when they woke up in the mornings, and there would always be three scratch marks on them. I started seeing a little girl in the hallway, and I remember the time I told my aunt that I had a twin. She looked just like me, but she wasn't allowed to play with me because she was dead. I was about eight at that time. My aunt told my mum, and my mum just wrote it off as my imagination. However, as an adult, I knew that this little girl wasn't okay, and she needed to go. My son, who was about six at this time, would wake up and come and get me out of the bed, 
and tell me that the girl in his room was really annoying and wouldn't leave him alone and let him sleep. I soon decided to get a cat. We named him Clover, and things seemed to quiet down for the most part. We'd been living in the house for about two years while we slowly finished off my husband's house. Clover was run over about a month after we got him. My kids were devastated. That's when the activity seemed to start up again, except more often. Instead of just the scratches, we would get bruises we couldn't explain. My husband would burn himself while wilding, and not remember what had happened. It was just, it felt like if for a few seconds, everything would go black. My kids didn't want to sleep alone anymore, because of the little girl, and a boy that wouldn't leave them alone. I decided to get another cat. We found him on a Sunday, so named him Sunday. It was about four months with nothing happening. Then we were awoken by screams and the clawing of Sunday. My husband and I both rushed out of our room at three in the morning to find the cat twisted and its paw slammed in the door of the girl's room. Naturally, we thought one of the kids had gotten up to go to the bathroom and had accidentally shut the cat's paw in the door. I, I mean, that's logical. But when I tried to open the door to free it, it wouldn't open. It wouldn't budge, and the doorknob wouldn't turn, as if someone was holding the door. So there was me, trying to open the door, the cat screaming, and my husband hurrying me along to open the door. The kids were woken up, and at first I thought, alright, they're trying to open the door at the same time. So I told them to get into bed, and wait till I could get the door open. My eldest daughter screamed that the boy was holding the door shut, and told him to let it go. At this point, fear took over me, and I kicked in the door with my foot. It swung open, and the cat ran free. The kids slept on our bedroom floor after that for about two weeks. Thinking later about it, the cat's paw was turned, facing the door frame, and twisted in a way that wasn't natural for it to go. After that, we put a rush on the house we were rebuilding, and got it done by the time the kids got out for summer vacation. The move was fast. My husband and myself didn't want to stay in the house any longer than we had to. I told my mum she could have the house, as I was done with it. On the last trip there, to get a few things I had forgotten, I sat in the living room praying for whatever it was in the house to just stay there. Then, a clicking noise in my old bedroom made me get up and see what it was. The electricity had been turned off along with the water to the house a week prior. The clicking was the ceiling fan, turning at an abnormal rate, faster than I had ever seen it go. I turned and ran from the house, and didn't look back. Normally, that's where the story ends. I wish it ended there. We had all been living in our new house for two years. No issues, nothing scary going on, and we had all put the horror out of our minds like it never existed. My mum bought me a dresser I had asked for, thinking the whole time that it was hers. It wasn't. It had been left behind in my grandmother's house. She gave it to me, and about a week later, I woke up to my dog, M growling. She never growls, but is very protective, and always sleeps under my bed. She was growling, and I opened my eyes, still in a bit of a haze from waking up, and saw a black figure with bone-like hands coming at me. It touched my shoulder, and felt cold than ice. I jumped up and started screaming, and the dog ran out from under the bed barking and growling. My husband jumps up from all the noise and turns on the light. I couldn't even explain to him what I saw, but he never questioned me after seeing how worked up our dog was. After that there was nothing, then in the spring of 2013 I was pregnant with my first child and my husband's fourth. One night, while laying in bed, my husband looked at me and said, if you ever cover my mouth and plug my nose again, I'm not staying in here with you. I looked at him confused, told him that I didn't know what he was talking about. He told me he wasn't joking, and said he had woken up because he couldn't breathe, and I was staring at him giggling, like he had never heard me do before. I said, I just wanted to see if it would work, looks like you're too smart for me, and laid back down and went to sleep. As if that wasn't weird enough, my son, who was 11 at the time, came to me and said that there was a boy in his room with glasses, 
and that my grandma told me to never talk to him, so I don't, but I'm supposed to tell you. Now, it's not that I didn't love my grandmother, but I had no pictures of her, because she hated for her picture to be taken, and I never really talked about her because I miss her, and that just makes me miss her more. So I asked him, how do you know what my grandma looks like? And he told me that she said that she was your grandma, and you used to call her Grammy or Gram. Never have I told any of my kids, or even my husband that, and I never told him what she used to say to me, but somehow he knew that it was just a thing between us. Soon our second son was born, and the final straw was when I was laying him down for bedtime in his crib. He's a very easy baby, never fights or screams, but this night he was looking above the closet and started screaming and pointing. I turned round to look there, and there was a dark shadow. I picked him back up, and ran and told my husband he was sleeping with us, and that our house was getting blessed. This happened the very next day, and since then I haven't heard anything, haven't seen anything, and everyone sleeps just fine at night. For now at least. Hi guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please remember to leave a like, a comment or a share, and if you haven't already, please help out the channel by hitting that little subscribe button, or just spreading the word to your friends about the channel if you think it's something they'd like too. I've been doing some scheduling, and I've got videos now sorted up until the end of September, which is great. They are going to be coming out very regularly on a Tuesday and a Friday on the channel. Tuesdays are going to be more fictional stories, whereas Fridays we're going to be looking into paranormal stories, stories that have been sent in to me, creepy stories from the internet, and also maybe a few lists um, along the lines of my older cryptid ones. Also, if you've got a story or an experience that you want to send in to be read on the channel, please feel free to get in touch with me using all the social medias. Uh, they're in the description box below. The easiest way to send anything to me and submit it would be via email, just so that I've got everything in the right place. Uh, best place to talk to me is probably Twitter or Facebook, though. If you want to say hi or ask me anything about the channel, feel free to. I don't mind answering any questions. I really like getting in touch with you guys. So... Until next time, sleep tight.